Welcome back, everyone, to the second iteration of the GSC cast, or the GSC podcast, where we talk about the second generation of Pokemon from a competitive perspective. Now, last time we spoke a little bit about uh, Nintendo Cup and some tournaments that, like some tournament scenes that are involved with the GSC Discord. If you're not familiar with this GSC Discord, I recommend also joining it, which because there will be a link in the description. But um, now we're mostly going to be focusing on some tournaments as well as other things related to Pokemon Showdown and Smogon. And, well, it's been a while. I haven't had the chance to make this uh, podcast earlier, even though I really wanted to. So there's definitely a lot to talk about. But uh, it's also true that I can't constantly churn videos and make things about content related to lower tiers and that's something I really like doing because I want to give uh, some of these lower tiers a chance but that's part of the reason why this uh, podcast exists in the first place because I can invite people that know a little bit more about tiers that even I don't know so or don't know much of and today as uh, our first guest special guest we have the pirate 99 also known as earthworm say hello ahoy ahoy i hear you loud and clear and i hope that the others do too <laughs> he's not that special says the parrot we're we're all special little snowflakes i guess anyway um so how are you doing I'm doing all right. How are you, Jerry? I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's, it's quite hot, so, you know. But uh, basically today I wanted to invite you because I decided that I wanted to talk to have some guest over. I didn't really manage to reach out to uh, other recent tournament winners. I've tried, but... Um, one thing I found very interesting is how you won this uh, really special tournament called the Never Used Home Field Advantage. That's uh, it's pretty cool because it involves like a bunch of different uh, generations, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, I I didn't really look at the rulings and stuff, but um, I do know that it was fairly recent, right? It was over, it happened over the course of this summer. And uh, I don't know, can you tell me something about this uh, tournament you won? Yeah, so uh, it was a tournament where um, it's best of three with the, the first tier being uh, Gen 8 NU, and then each player who enters the tournament has to pick one um, generation's NU, and whenever they lose a game in the best of three series, the next game will be that tier. So I picked, uh, I predictably chose GSC NU. Um, Every round. Uh, so you set it when you sign up, I think, so you don't have to choose over and over again, and that way the opponent also knows what they have to prepare for. Oh, okay. Well, I guess for this type of uh, tournament, that would make sense, because otherwise it's like a really long... Uh, I don't know, otherwise you can counter pick a bunch of different things, and it gets. It, I could imagine it getting really messy, so... Yeah, there were certainly plenty of tiers where I uh, I didn't have a team ready. <laughs> like, can you name a few? Um, probably Gen 5. Uh, I didn't have one for Gen 6, Gen 7, or Gen 8 until I faced an opponent that had... Well, I, I obviously had to come up with something for Gen 8, but uh, I did have to find something to use for Gen 6 and Gen 7 when I faced somebody that had that as their home home tier. 
So do you consider yourself someone who's like, who's up to date with, uh, the current gens, at least for the past couple of years, like even going back to when gen seven was a current gen, like, or have you just left, uh, pretty much left those generations behind? Um, I'm, I've certainly not played much of, uh, gen seven or gen eight. Uh, my experience in those is extremely limited. So you're a, for those that don't know, you're, you're actually a very old player. Like I'm, <laughs> you're basically a geezer. You've been around since the game facts, um, era when people would just talk about Pokemon there, um, on those forums, but like what, what, which generations would you consider your areas of expertise? Obviously GS, GSC would be one of them, but. Uh, yeah, GSC, which is Gen 2, is um, a very, very clear favorite of mine, and it's easily the generation I'm most proficient in. Um, but I also have um, plenty of experience in Gens 1, 3, and 4. But uh, I haven't been playing Gen 4 as much. Okay, okay. So... Um... The, the other thing that I always found kind of interesting was how I, I had gotten into, like, um, Generation 2 on my own, like, on my own terms, in, because it was the cartridge game that I, that I liked the most. Um, what's your favorite cartridge game? I mean, what's your favorite game, in, in any case, of uh, Pokemon? Um, I would say probably Pokemon Gold. All right, we got the same, we got the exact same favorite then. I mean, I never had Silver that or right. Crystal. <laughs> Me neither, yeah. Yeah, I had a friend change the battery of uh, my gold cartridge just so I could use it again after like 10 years or so. <laughs> oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Anyways, back to the, to one of the matters at hand which is lower, lower tiers. Cause I knew a little bit about, um, GSC never used and it hasn't had the popularity. It like it has, it didn't always have the popularity it has now, or at least over the past one or two years. Um, how did like, do you agree with that? Or maybe, maybe not. How has it changed? Um, I definitely think that the tier has become a lot more accessible, at least over the past couple of years. Um, that would be due to the efforts of uh, Reese Hughes and uh, myself and some others. Um, now we've got like uh, analyses on site, we've got a proper viability ranking and all that other stuff that uh, kind of opens it up to... Uh, bigger audience if they get an interest in taking a shot at it. Yeah, shout outs um, to the um, never used uh, quality control team. Is that uh, quality, the QC team that have been writing. Uh, yes, I believe, I believe you're a part of that too. I am, uh, although I've been really lazy with the writing, so. <laughs> but definitely, I mean, it goes without saying that Reese Hughes has become kind of synonymous with uh, GSC and you. But what about before? So what what was it like? Um, you want to know how the tier? Yeah, if you can like describe the, the, the threats and stuff. Okay. Um. Uh, so. Would you rather I uh, I go through like the history of the formation of the tier, or just talk about what the meta game was like? You can. I can do both. You can. Uh, you can do both. Based, like you can do whichever, and based on that, I'll also like help out. Like I have a couple of uh, links open here as well. Like I can open, for instance, uh, I have a couple of resources and links, mm, like this one here. 
This one is a really old one. I don't even know if that was, if you, yeah, you already were invested in uh, GSC and you in 2016, but I don't know how much. So this is way. Yeah. Better. So um, I think maybe that link in uh, Jorgen's post there, he says in this post, it might be referring to the Mount Silver forums. Yes. Where, where, where's that link go to? Yeah, yeah. If you want, I'll open it right now. It does, in fact, link to Mount Silver. And it's kind of funny that um, that he brings it up, in my opinion, because now, looking back at it, it's pretty whack. So some of the Enumons you can also see in this list of UU Pokemon, but... <clears throat> oh, my God. I, I drank too much water. Um, anyway... But you can see NU Pokemon, there's Mr. Mime. At least in this list. I don't think there's Haunter. And um, maybe because it's not included, but it's considered an NF... It was just an NFE, a not fully evolved Pokemon. That's why it's not in, um, in uh, underused either. But it, that means it was basically accessible in... Uh, never used so this is like i don't know this post is from 2011 so really old yeah so um crystal the guy that um he was he was in charge of mount silver and he's like a he's also like a mechanics researcher yeah um yeah, yeah he was uh quite into gen 2 and he and the other um, Gen 2 players that were really well known at the time, they got together and they came up with these lists because uh, at the time, um, GSC lower tiers were pretty dead and they wanted to, I guess, they wanted an opportunity to play something other than OU and Ubers. And they decided that the UU tier was not so great, and as well as that, they also decided um, it was about time that somebody made an NU tier. So uh, that's what they did. But uh, yeah, it's... so they had like, like speaking of the meta game, then they had uh, Mr. Mime. They had uh, there's your there's your spreadsheet here as well, which you made at the time which I thought was pretty cool. Um, basically, the big threats were uh, Mr. Mime, Pikachu. I want to hide this. Oh, God. All right. You know what? Yeah. Haunt. I, I think the crazy part is how Mr. Mime, Pikachu, and Haunter were even greater threats than Raichu was way back when. Uh, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> this was probably, uh, back then, I don't know how great a grasp of the tier we had. I think, yeah, we probably were pretty good at it, although, um, as a metagame develops, it always changes, like, over time, and we discover things that we weren't aware of. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you can see what the metagame was like, at least at the time that I made that spreadsheet. Hmm. Which, which I think is pretty cool, but especially since a lot of these mons are uh, are still pr they still like hold their own today. Some have fallen off and dropped to PU. Some even lower. But uh, what I found pretty crazy is how Zatu, which is the current number one Pokemon, is way down here in thirty fifth position. But this was this wasn't official. It was just a rating by ISA. Yeah, that's like, uh, that's the result of, that's 100% the result of Mr. Mime being the top one there because uh, Mr. Mime has electric coverage and obviously Zatu is not going to do well against that. Not to mention the fact that it it's probably like same speed as uh, Pikachu. So that's not really good. No, it's just it's just faster than it, but still. 
So yeah, I mean, I don't want this part to necessarily take forever, but um, I think going back on to, you know, looking back on that history is always kind of interesting, but there are other um, cool threads as far as GSC is concerned. And like one day, 2019 comes around and there's like, I don't know if it's a suspect or if you guys just decide to ban a couple of Pokemon. Um, so the, the thread that you're looking at now, um, you kind of skipped ahead a bit. Uh, what happened was there was another there's another thread between this one and the previous one that you were looking at, uh, where we decided to release all these Pokemon from UU that were basically going unused in UU. I couldn't find um, it, unfortunately. I, I sort of scrambled for the, for the thread, but... Yeah, that's Hold okay. On. Well, so you can see this Pokemon like uh, Poliwrath, Raichu, Golduck. They wouldn't have been in um, the one that you were looking at just now. I'm pretty sure they would have been classed in UU. Okay. Um, but we decided to uh, get rid of Mr. Mime because it became like a top tier Pokemon in UU after people figured out that it was good. And. Um, at the same time as getting rid of Mr. Mime, Haunter, and Pikachu, we uh, we brought down a whole lot of Pokemon that were not performing well in Yu Yu. So that included things like uh, Magmar, um, maybe like Nine Tails, I think. Um, okay. I mean, right here, Poliwrath, Golduck, and a few others, I think. All right, so that's, I mean, that's obviously, I don't know, I find, I always find these things really fascinating. I think that this, in one of these threads you also mention, I'm having a hard time finding it, but in the NU discussion somewhere, these things pop up. So for any of the viewers out there that are, um, curious to know a little bit more about the history it's it's all there you can find it on smogon just go to ruins of alf then gsc and you know you can you can filter and look for lower tiers only and you'll find the resources so um so there's this this is this is the thread this right. is the one where we kick out those three pokemon and bring down some yu yu pokemon we didn't bring down Omastar. No, yeah, it says right here that it was banned from NU. But it wasn't ranked in UU yet. So that's... That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit ashamed that I didn't have uh, the right threads open. But if you had to describe... Let's say I went back and I pulled up the current NU... Um, viability ranking because that seems like the best the best way to go or, there it is you know and you just like and we, if we look at it today Raichu is nowhere to be seen because it's been it's been banned some Pokemon went up some went down I think it was yeah. kind of cool because at a certain point, if we go back to that, in that other link, there was the uh, discussion about banning a couple of these Pokemon like Raichu, Poliwrath, and Golduck, right? And so um, when uh, when these were banned, that's when things started to become a little bit more popular, I guess, or it was already starting to be popular, but um, we, we managed to get a lot of enthusiasm because that was also when the GSC Discord, you know, exploded. And I think in, uh, in 2020, 2019-2020, that's when GSC NU was just becoming like, there was an, a renaissance for that tier in terms of popularity. Yeah, so... Uh... This this tier that had uh, Raichu, Poliwrath, and Golduck, it was actually featured in NUPL. Oh, okay. Um, 
to yeah players like me, um, Parrot, Diophantine, um, HSA, and some others. I think Lodian and some others. They uh they all played GSC and U and NUPL that year. Um, and it actually ended up like uh. It, it didn't go so well because a lot of the games, uh, a lot of the most successful strategies were like basically the same team with uh, like a stallish kind of strategy and nobody was really enjoying the tier at that time. Uh, and that's what prompted these, these changes. So um, we clearly identified that there was a problem with the metagame. It's just not enjoyable and these Pokemon are too dominant. Raichu, Raichu vs Raichu was very obnoxious to have to play because it's really hard to deal with. And um, yeah, no, it was <coughs> it was inexcusable to not use Raichu because it was just too good. Yeah, so we went through this process and we basically kicked them out of the tier. And since Raichu and Mister Mime earlier had both made their exit from the tier. Uh, that has allowed Zatu to rise to the top now. Yeah, I just wanted to mention how GSC as a tier in, like as a generation among uh, competitive players on Showdown always it kind of gets a bad rep um, for publicity due to oh it's it's always stall. But like you've never tried have if you've tried 2019 GSC and you then we can talk because it was terrible it was just raichu and then as soon as you see a raichu you just switch into your own because you didn't have any good resistors and there were no good electrics pikachu was also banned and raichu knows surf so you have to be careful about switching in dug trio and there were no good grass types so it really there was a Execute and execute was a like a major uh, component of that uh, that strategy that was being excessively used. Yeah, it really did yeah. at a certain point boil down to that to the, to using the, that. The theory there was that um, Raichu's best set was Rest Talk, um, and it couldn't run coverage for execute uh, without sacrificing coverage that would allow it to KO an opposing Raichu. So the only move that it could run is like hidden power, which could be like ice or dark or something. Presumably it would be ice. And that would hit execute super effectively, but then you would have no move to like target the opposing Raichu for enough damage to actually threaten a KO on it. Yeah. And the waters were really popular because of Doug Trio, essentially? Or no? Well, Polyrath basically walled like half the tier, so... It, it, the only thing it didn't wall was basically like Raichu and Execute. Well, that's probably not true, but that was what it felt like. Okay. Well, I mean, I would imagine so. It's water fighting, and then there's like this... Psychic type, um, so yeah, it was it was at a very unhealthy state when you got when you brought everyone together to to make decisions on banning um, these three. For alligator had previously also been banned, and boom, here we are today. When we're at the current iteration of GSC and you, and it's also gone through a bunch of different meta shifts, so. Um, I mean, I think it's cool. Now we have Zatu at the top. What did you, what what would you do to make this tier, this new tier, get the attention that you thought it deserved? Because you seem to show a lot of interest in all, in uh, lower tiers, and I'll get like I'll touch more on that later. Yeah, so uh, I just really like exploring. Uh, new metagames um, to kind of like popularize it and bring it to people's attention. 
the approach that I usually go with is just to push the button on the forums, um, try to give people enough resources that they can take a look at the tier and make their own judgments about it, build their own teams, and I just try to encourage people to play. Um, I host some tours if I have that ability. Yeah, that's that's the kind of uh, method that I have been using. Someone says, so the parrot says, yeah, it was a boring stall hacks tier. And someone else says that GSC NU in its current state is uh, really enjoyable. I agree with that. I I like that you can you can be very flexible. You can you can build a lot of different things. Um, do you do you think that this tier is kind of figured out at this point, or it's it's solved? I, I definitely wouldn't say that. It's uh. It's a very uh, offensive tier, so uh, it can be it can be uh, quite tricky to uh, gain an advantage through like your team building. Um, and I feel like because it's such an offensive tier, there's strategies that you can use to mess with the momentum that your opponent might have, like. Uh, I know that Reese and some others have been using that uh, light screen stantless set, mm. which is actually really dangerous. It's it's. I, I really thought that that t that set wasn't going to work because typically those kinds of sets in most Gen two tiers, um, the sets that require you to spend like multiple turns of setup, they just get walled and forced out, and you end up wasting your time and probably losing your position. But uh, this tier it doesn't have many explosion users that you can use to like reset the field and uh, Stantler has like basically unstoppable coverage almost except for like Shuckle. So you can actually um, do quite a lot of damage with a double setup move set which is yeah really Interesting. What, is it Curse Light Screen? I I don't remember the set. Yeah, it's it's Curse Light Screen and then a normal attack and earthquake. Wow, that is, that actually is kind of crazy because you have one move that you know patches up your your special defense, the other one your defense, while also making you stronger. It seems pretty straightforward actually, but I've never used Curse Light Screen ever in any tier. <laughs> So I find it pretty impressive. The the closest thing I've done to something like to to use something like that must be um, belly drum unburdened slurpuff in like some I think it was like in Sword and Shield or something, but it probably existed before that too. Uh, it uses screens, I think, or maybe it's screen support. I don't even remember very well, but you have the support to set up so that's uh I, I don't think i can't remember if it's all on on one move because i don't really play much sword and shield anymore anyway but um yeah so what another thing that i noticed is how you know you won this this tournament right the nu home field advantage which goes from GSC all the way to Sword and Shield. Um, I guess it must have been really hard prepping for those tiers that you weren't really... You didn't have much familiarity with. Well, to be honest, I, when I entered that tour, I, uh, I was mainly doing it to try to, like... Show the NU community that the GSC NU community is willing to like sign up for their tournaments when they include us. But uh, so yeah, I was I was expecting to probably get eliminated in the first couple of rounds because yeah, I'd never played most of these tiers in my life before. But well, you sure showed them. Happening, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like I just uh, I didn't do any prep at all. I just took like two sample teams. 
And then I actually, I think I got through like three or four rounds without even having to play GSC. Which was just crazy. Do you think that comes from your experience with just Pokemon in general? Being Yeah, I would say... Um, I'd say it was a mix of the sample teams that I chose being very strong as well as me having like good fundamentals um, in the game I've played for a very, 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 very long time. So, yeah. Let's see. So you won. You had. Was it a three way finals or was it just against. Uh... Yeah, it was, a, it was a round robin final. Okay. Between you, Expulso, and Maple. So you won. You won Sword and Shield, never used. And lost DPP and you. I kind of thought that you'd win DPP just because you were considered like uh, one of the best also in DPP, but um, overused at least one, once upon a time. Like, I don't know. Am I, am I saying um, something completely out there or? Well, yeah, I was definitely a top player in Gen 4. That's. Um, pretty much not up for dispute, but um, I haven't played any or much of Gen 4 for a very long time, so um, I'm sure that the, the Gen 4 and new meta would have evolved quite a bit since I played it back then, and I don't think I played too much of it back then either. Okay, well, there's there's another thing that I noticed that was like kind of interesting i mean we haven't been hosting too many discord uh any too many tournaments on uh the gsc discord not as many as i would have liked but that didn't stop people from gaining interest in uh some of the other lower tiers and um in february of this year they hosted the gsc zu cup which you also won so <laughs> Uh, you want to say anything about that? Um, yeah, I have I was actually surprised because uh, I'd been playing GSCPU and I wasn't enjoying it that much. Uh, like, I, I, I wasn't able to like consistently win on the ladder. And, uh, it just felt like it was uh, a pretty... I don't know how to describe it, but I, uh, yeah, I was kind of struggling with GSCPU. So I was thinking the GSCZU would be worse, but it was actually uh, pleasantly surprising because it was quite enjoyable. So you enjoy and, uh, it? More? I mean, yeah, I, I do. I enjoy it more than PU actually, and uh, uh, I, I entered that tour because, like, I felt like it's a new meta, and I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to make my mark in a new meta even though I'm pretty sure a lot of the people in that tour would have had more experience than me at the time but yeah I uh, took my own uh, style to that tournament and it worked out so is uh is Krokna the best Krokna or in Z um, I don't know anything about Zhu. Give me one second. Yeah. I think there's a usage stat somewhere here that I can probably pull up. Oh, there we go. So for the viewers, Reese compiled uh, some usage stats out of all of these replays. And it's quite a lot, actually. Krokona has been used 113 times. I don't know how many games there were. I think File 13 wants to talk about GSCZU. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely get back to him. But anyway, I, I just thought of asking um, one question. Oh, my. Did someone start playing music? All right. Someone's playing music. Is that me? Hang on. 
on. That's me. All right, I'm gonna mute that there. Okay, so um, yeah, no, of course, of course, he wants to talk. I mean, we have other guests that w to talk about the other tiers as well. Um, but I find it kind of interesting because I just did it a bit of like quick research on the tours that you won recently, and basically, it looks like in 2020 you won one one tournament with like at least i don't know 30 or so players i don't know maybe maybe that's not a precise number in every every gsc tier um barring gsc zu which you won this year but i have right here gsc uu cup which is an actual circuit tournament august 2020 that you won gsc pu tour which was a spotlight tournament of runes valve in October 2020, and GSC Ubers, you also won in June 2020, and you won the past the GSC OU uh, championships of 2020. And by the looks of it, from the seating, you weren't even supposed to make it in. But I guess two people left vacant spots. You were at your bottom seated. Um. I don't know, like, have your parents ever told you to let other kids win when you were small? <laughs> um, if they did, I can't remember it. I, uh... Clearly. I, I don't tend to, uh, go easy on anybody. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've, I guess that, that makes the difference between someone who, uh, who knows how to, like, who knows how to win and someone who doesn't. Maybe I'm I'm sorry, I might be dick riding, but a little bit, but you know like some of these tournaments are tiers that like you even won GSC PU, which didn't exist as a as a meta prior to the, the tournament or had only begun existing. It was something made with the intents of promoting the tier. And you also won GSC NU in uh on the GSC Discord. So how how do you do it? Right? What like how do you how do you study a new metagame? What do you what do you do to just innovate in something and win in a tournament of a tier that you technically didn't ever touch before? Um so what I would say is um I as you would have seen already, I, I, I tend to make like spreadsheets so that I can uh, compare Pokemon at a glance to some extent. I've got like, uh, even though I might be new to a tier, I, I tend to have like encountered these Pokemon before somewhere and have some idea of what they do in some tier. So that gives me a bit of an edge, like I, I know pretty much every single Pokemon um, I, I'm aware of like what their stats are like, what kind of moves they have and all that and then um, yeah so once I can like pull up a spreadsheet and start analyzing um, that gives me the ability to guess which Pokemon are going to be at the top of the tier um, and I've done that like Numerous times, so it's it's kind of like a, a skill that I have. Like I, I, I'm pretty good at analyzing um, new meta games or meta games that I haven't played before, and try to figure out what's going to work. So, what's your favorite lower tier of uh, as far as GSC is concerned? Um, that's a that's a difficult question. Um, you can throw in Ubers as well. I know some people don't like to agree with, uh, with, uh, with the fact that Ubers is lower tier, but it's hmm. it's really tough. I <laughs> I guess I would go with the uh, UU maybe. Okay. I see we have similar tastes. That's my favorite too. <laughs> it's been my favorite for the past year now. Um, if uh, the fact that I 
I don't know, signed up to all these tours says anything. All right. Yeah, I think UU has like, um, a lot of room to innovate because there's a big variety of Pokemon in, in UU, unlike some of the other tiers. And uh, uh, like Ubers, is, it supposedly has the biggest variety of Pokemon, but, but because some of the top Pokemon are so, so freaking strong, it kind of pushes out a lot of the other Pokemon. Whereas in UU, um, yeah, there are a few like really strong top tier Pokemon, but um, you've also got like a big variety of both offensive and defensive strategies available that can handle pretty much everything. So, yeah, good to. Yeah. Well, um, thanks. First of all, for you know giving giving us the chance to uh, look at some of that, we are gonna um, take a like minor break, so that way I don't tax the uh, my CPU too much. But mostly also because I I keep drinking water and I really have to use the bathroom. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about GSC ZU. Sorry if I uh, muted. Uh, File 13, but we'll be getting back to you in a second. I really need one minute to um, use the bathroom. A few moments later. All right, so we're back with the second part of our GSC cast. Uh, this part's going to be a little bit more chill. Um, I have File 13 here today, and the Pirate 99, of course, is still here, at least for now, um, because it's really late in Australia, I might imagine. It is indeed. Yeah. Whereas in uh, in the states, it must be really early in the morning right now. I yeah, it's what... pretty early. I got up. I got up uh, about seven. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to miss it. I wanted to hear Earthworm's interview. Well, live. I'm glad that uh, you know we got around to that for sure. So, um, I guess we agreed that I'm going to be putting the music on after, sad. Um, anyway, hello, File13, um, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm, uh, feeling a little under the weather, so my, my voice sounds a little nasally, but, uh, I'm, I'm getting through it. <laughs> I, uh... I am one of the people who compiled the resources for GSCZU. I sort of took the lead on it. Reese came up with the idea for the tier, so he gets the credit for being the creator. But I pretty much did all the work. <laughs> one day we're going to have Reese on uh, this, uh, on this uh, podcast I would love as to well. have him. Yeah, I would love to have him on here and talk about it too because, you know, we owe it to him that we get to play this tier. Um, and NPU and sub ZU and NU. <laughs> yeah, and a, a palatable in you. Uh, let's see here. But anyway, uh, I don't. I don't know. Like, what? What? What do you want me to discuss? Do you want me to talk about like the origin of the tier, or you want me to? So I, I mean, I don't know it? if there's anything that you think is relevant to its history. It's very young history. Uh, I'm all ears, but um, basically. Since I have never played a single game of ZU, zero used, um, I don't know, why don't you just run through me what you think are some of the threats and uh, some of the, like, powerful, I don't know, the threats okay. and what it's uh, like. Is it is it balanced or is it really... It feels really balanced, but to get a better picture of it, if you will, if you'll share your screen and go to the pinned messages of the ZU chat. Hang on. Uh, no. F file, can you can you hear me? Is it working now? I don't know. Do you see the screen? Because I I don't know if you guys see it, but. Okay, I can see you now. I can see your screen. All right, wonderful. So okay, good deal. All right. Sorry about that. Let's, if you hop on to the, 
CU discussion thread in the GSC Discord. Oh, okay. It's just the easiest. I, I'm just going to get us to the, um, the pinned messages, and then you can click on the, I, I believe it's the very first one to see here. All right. So if you go over to Ruins of Alf, for the viewers out there, you can just... Ruins of Alf is like where you find old gen resources. And the, But what's unique about this is the ZU stuff is actually in the ZU old gens hub rather than being under oh, the... Oh, so it's not under GST. GST. All right. Yeah, so what you can do, you can actually just do this this way if you'd like. Yeah. You can go to your search engine of choice and type in... Uh, Z, just ZU Old Gens Hub, and it'll come up. And um, on page three of that, there's a post by Cheem, and All right. he details the stuff for the tier. I, I might even have had it open somewhere. Yeah, no worries. I just wanted to help you navigate it so we yeah, can that's, get, get no, to thank the meat you. of You've the matter fast. No, thank you. super helpful. So just scroll on down, and it'll be a post by Cheem. Uh, where it's like an Emperor Palpatode looking profile pic. Yeah, Palpatode. And, and that, and he he pretty much um, just popped out of the blue. He's a ZU um, council member for for Sword and Shield as well as for ADV, etc. Uh, super nice guy. Uh, he came to me and said, "Hey, look, if you'll, you know, if you want to put these." things together like the legal pokemon list and the speed tiers and the vr uh well at the time it was just a viability list uh rather than a ranking this was before the council was formed um he just came to me and said look if you want to get some exposure for the tier throw me these resources and i'll put them on the site and basically it was because he's got a little better standing with the zu folks so it made more sense for him to make the initial post because, I mean, you know, you can see there people have ha ha the post, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a big joke because it's GSC. We did it. Uh, but I actually had it's this... got a lot of. I Go remember ahead. talking about how I would never play something so, so vile as GCZU. I wanted, I wanted everything to stop at NU. And I remember joking about how one day there would be a ZU. So there is part, like, it's, the origin isn't entirely, like, I don't think it's fair to say you should attribute the origin to me, but it was like, you know, um, I did make a joke about it. Anyway, a, a sort of meme, like a SpongeBob meme, which I might show later. Anyways, I have the VR open. Is this the only place where I can find it, or... This is the official VR. This this was actually worked up by the council, and also Earthworm was uh, a voter on these placings for these Pokemon. Um, we were mostly unanimous on almost all of these. There there wasn't really any more than like a letter difference that uh, between I mean among the voters is what I mean. Like for example. There was nobody that put Poliwag lower than A. Okay. And it wound up in A+. plus. So, like, we were all pretty well aware of what was dangerous and what's, you know, maybe not so dangerous and more niche. Uh, but at first, the two biggest threats in the tier were um, Wartortle and Quilava. And they were so hard to kill... Like, you, you would pretty much, whoever won the game is the person who killed their war turtle. I mean, who get to keep their war turtle longer. And Dang. it was pretty awful. And me and Dio Fantine came up with a set for uh, war turtle. He thought it was kind of garbage, but it was Surf, um, Zap Cannon, Ice, no, it was rather Surf, Zap Cannon, Blizzard, and Rest with a uh, mint berry which for people who play more recent gins is like a like a lum berry i mean rather it's, no, like, it's a like a chesto berry yeah it's a chesto berry yeah so it's basically a chesto berry it's knowing like how much diofantine loves blastoise and gsc uu i could totally 
see this coming. <laughs> yeah, but what's funny is this tier, it doesn't have a spiker. It doesn't have anything that actually learns the move spikes. So uh, we came up with the idea to use, this is mostly a meme, but some people use it to some good effect. People like Earthworm can get some pretty good metronome pulls. Uh, <laughs> metronome Togetic. And it's really just kind of a meme, but it's the only way in the tier where you can actually get spikes up. <laughs> so, you know, wow, it that. almost it's almost as iconic as uh, someone else who used spikes in a very particular way. Uh, yeah, very unique about. sort of way using some sort of mimicry or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder who that was. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> But, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, it was, you know, it's just kind of like jokey jokes and stuff. And then I started really liking playing the tier. And this was still when War so, Turtle and Kulaba were there. Uh, allow me to stop you right there because before we like go off on a tangent, I really don't know anything about ZU. So, like, what makes, like, I don't know, what makes Krokinaw different from War Turtle? Krokinaw has less uh less of a presence offensively than war turtle war turtle was capable i'm not looking at their stats right now let me pull up their stats so i can be as accurate as possible about my info here but essentially what it boiled down to is that war turtle had better coverage and War Turtle was capable of killing opposing War Turtle using Zap Cannon, where you could just, you know, it's 50% accurate, but if you connect, it's a guaranteed paralysis. So you could really cheese them down with that. And, uh, you know, it just, it was kind of like Earthworm, I know, will probably sympathize with this notion that it was very similar to the Hitmonchan Wars in PU, where you just sit there and flail at each other hoping for a crit or hoping for a body slam paralysis full para or something and it was just nonsense but anyway long story long we got rid of war turtle and quillava and crocana sort of rose to the top it's a wonderful pokemon it, it's capable of running all kinds of different sets you can run you know surf toxic roar rest you can run Surf, Rock Slide, Rest Talk. You can run Curse Talk. You can do all. So it's a mixed attacker. It, I use it as a special attacker, uh, mostly. But you can actually you can run one of my favorite sets where it's Surf, Ancient Power, Rest, Sleep Talk. You can you can use Ice Beam over Ancient Power depending on your surrounding. Um, Sounds pretty cast. <laughs> but but what's really crazy is how often you get to fish for that ancient power omni boost. The the natural bulk of of uh, Croconaw, it's more than people realize. It's got some really good defense. Let's see here, it's got eighty defense. Not to mention a sleep uh, an ancient power user that has sleep talk means he gets like potentially. 16 more chances to go to fish for that boost <laughs> yeah it's insane you Each can even turn. go uh like if you if you're running a structure that doesn't rely on crocodile's health being tip top at all times because it's a really good defensive pokemon despite its offensive capabilities if you're on a structure that doesn't demand it being at you know above 75 percent or whatever you can actually run a three attack set with something like surf ice beam and ancient power and rest and throw on a uh a mint berry and you're good to go i mean you think you think it's dangerous when it's got rock plus water try uh switching in on it when it's got ice too you know togetic doesn't like switching in on it uh things like butterfree get two shot by ancient power uh you know just it, it just has a very very dangerous presence and so part of the reason go ahead what about uh what what's togetic do what what's it do like togetic clearly main thing it's not because talk. of oh it's cursed oh, okay okay i can dig that it's it run and and it prefers double edge 
over its other options. Double edge is just more damage. That's all there is to it. And and the recoil is kind of minor. You don't really care about the recoil because you can you can rest on a lot of stuff in the tier. There's not very many things that can threaten the two hit KO on Togetic. And there's no Ghastly uh, in this tier? There are no ghosts. There are no dark types. There are no steels. So what yeah, that means yeah. is that psychics and poisons have a very easy time pressuring late game. If hmm. you can eliminate their checks and counters, you've got a really, really excellent time for stuff like Smoochum, for example. Smoochum is extremely dangerous. Hmm. In fact, you can run a four attack Smoochum with Ice Beam, Psychic, Blizzard, and Shadow Ball, and you oh, can God. hit everything in the tier. You can hit everything in the tier uh, for at least neutral damage. It's amazing. And what's funny is, it was thought for a while that Hidden Power Dark was preferable. Because if you look at Smoochum's stats, it's got really awful attack. And coming off of a base 30 attack, you think Shadow Ball is worthless. Since it's physical in GSC. Oh my god, it's base 30. <laughs> but Shadow Ball actually two hit KOs opposing Smoochum. Whereas... Hidden Power Dark only offers a three-hit KO. I mean, so it's base 15 really, really defense, and it's a baby Pokemon. The fact that it can threaten it? anything is just incredible. Isn't it, though? And and I'm not a fan of this set, but you can actually run Sing on it if you want sort of a... Uh, 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 like, a like a little mini Jinx uh, that can actually put things to sleep. Now, I, I'm not really crazy about that. I, I'd rather just dish out damage. I but, could see Sleep Talk Crocona being a decent answer to it. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, it takes like 40 from Psychic. So it has to get a favorable series of rolls while it's asleep if it wants to kill Smoochum. It's, it, it's, it's a threat. It's funny because Smoochum's so slow. Uh, I mean, 228, you look at the other things like, I mean, Onyx, for example, hits 238. And you don't even think of Onyx as necessarily being that fast, but it out, outruns a good portion of the meta. Uh, Does Onyx Oko it? Onyx, Onyx uh, Oko's with Rock Slide, I believe. Let's see here. Just off the top of my head, I believe it does. I don't see why it wouldn't. I'm pretty sure it does as well. Rock Slide. Oh, wow. Guaranteed two hit KO after leftovers recovery. It doesn't even right. two hit KO it. It two hit KOs. It does eighty one point right. five to ninety six point two. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say it doesn't even Oko it. There are no spikes, so it's just that's it. Yeah. So yeah, Smoochum's really dangerous, uh, but I like it a lot. You can one shot Sand True with Ice Beam. Uh, hmm. You can you can uh, let's see here. I can't remember. Let me pull up the Togetic calc. It's got a really funny quirk of hitting Togetic. Let's see here. Yeah, Ice Beam 2 hit KOs. But um, the reason that I suggest that you run Ice Beam alongside Blizzard is because Blizzard actually um, can one shot Weeping Bell, whereas Psychic and Ice Beam come up short and, uh, and smooch them notably outspeeds weeping bell which is very important so uh it can be a, sort of a stop gap for teams that they lack in checks for weeping bell you can have that smooch them in the back come in on a down and just blizzard it to death you know what i think that i can probably learn and we can probably show some people some games let's we can try playing something that way we can uh you can teach me something something more I don't want to make people. Uh, how do I find the samples? I can't remember. Is it Gen Arfac Gen two, or just Arfac samples? To, if you go to the yeah, okay, you're on the zero use room. If you yeah. type in slash RFAQ, it'll bring up the uh, the prompt on the left side of the screen. All right, and you can scroll down to sample Gen two. There. There it is. Okay. Yeah, and mine's the one at the very bottom of the sample Gen 2. That's Butterfree plus fire and ice. Yep. Okay. It's um, pretty much a screaming pace offense. 
It's really fun. All right, let's play. <laughs> let's see here. Gosh, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm mentally prepared to play. I just, I was just, I thought I was just talking about it. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me. Uh, ah, let me you are mistaken. Something. Ha ha. Oh, I'm showing you everything right now. You can see what team I'm about to paste. Here's here's an idea. Now, nah, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna trust your goodwill at not by not stream sniping me. On uh, the weeping bell, weeping bell note, that thing is—it's uh, insanely strong. Um, it is. It really is. Let's... Like I thought, um, I thought I had a good handle on the tier when I made my first team, but I, I got pretty much six zero by a weeping bell. <laughs> I was pretty surprised to see that weeping bell learns lovely kiss. I don't know how. I mean, it already has sleep powder, but whatever. Can I challenge you now? Uh, if you want to. Yeah, I do. I want to learn. I never played this tier. I I've played one game of GSCPU, and that's it. So, all right. Maybe I'll, uh... oh no, what am I doing? This is a super common lead matchup. Is it? I, and I'm, I'm just going to put my phone to the side. I don't want to, I don't want to know what you have. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to reduce the window. Okay. Like I, I just, I have to keep it somewhat close so you can hear my voice, but at the same no, time. No, don't worry I'm about it. I, you me. can't see my moves anymore. Okay, cool. All I mean, right. you can have a peek, I guess. All right, so this is a common matchup, huh? This is an extremely common matchup. I Butterfree didn't... is one of the... I think, in my opinion, it's the best lead. It gets scared out by leads like Doduo, but um, you don't really see that run too often. I'm just going to pretend I'm playing a random battle. <laughs> I'm, I'm personally not much of a fan of... Butterfree, I, I prefer to uh, take it on with like a sleep talker and it can't really do too much. Okay, so you hit me with like hidden power rock or fire or something. I don't know. I don't know my calcs. Uh, this is kind of embarrassing. You just, I didn't think you'd do that much damage. Oh no, I missed. Am I slower? <laughs> it seems like he's there. Am I slower because fast. of like some speed DVs or something or Unless you're running HP fire, you shouldn't be slower. Okay. Noted. It's a speed it's a speed tie anyway in this gen. Yeah, but like if I'm HP fire and he's HP something else, for instance, yeah. It's it's still a speed tie. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. So you completely trashed my lead. Way to welcome someone to a new tier. There. What? This is why I love Butterfree, because it eats. Wow, okay, that's really frustrating. I feel like a You're new You're in trouble right now. now. Yeah, no. Um, Especially since you've already seen it has HP rock. So you're not going to be able to wake it up safely against Butterfree either. Huh. I'm a mm. Butterfree truther. I don't know the speed tiers here. Like, there might be a chance I can wake this thing up again, but I don't know. Let's look at the speed tiers. So I would say it's three. very unlikely. Magby's tier three. 
How common are these Yanma, Diglett, Meowth, and Poliwag? They don't sound like they're super common besides maybe Poliwag. I think you should basically consider Mag be dead. You practically never see Yanma. All right. Especially since you already have a Butterfree. You have your bug flying, see? I'm thinking, I'm using my brain. Oh wait, you have... <laughs> you probably have Psych... Yeah, you have Psych... This is super annoying. It's a good thing this seal is pure water. Hmm. It took, it took that Psychic like a champ. Oh my god, really? I don't know, man. I don't know about this. I'm not liking this. <laughs> oh, here. This looks sufficiently bulky. Oh, finally. Oh, man. I don't know. This is pretty nuts. This is pretty nuts. I don't know what to say. At least I got my seal in. So, it looks like in this tier, fire, water, grass is decent. Fire, water, grass is really good. Um... You'll see Togetic on almost every build because it ha it offers such good defensive qualities. Like there's not a whole ton of things that uh, can come in on Earthquake that aren't also weak to rock. Mm. I mean, rather aren't also quad weak to rock is what I meant to say. Uh, so anyway, Togetic, it's just got great stats. I mean, you've got really, really high special defense. It's got the highest special Dang it, defense. I didn't need to here. click that. How do I beat this? I don't know how to beat this thing. Huh. I think this is over. I don't know. It's just my gut telling me that to just stop retaliating. Hey, I was just here to talk about it. You wanted to play. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Frick. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Hmm. That was abysmal. Let's 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 use some strats. No, I didn't want that. I think this is your Togetic counter. Yeah. This set is actually my favorite is Onyx. This is actually pretty okay as a set. But I have like no onyx check. I have uh Ivysaur in the back. <laughs> you had a seal. I did, right? But is sharpen onyx a thing? I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Let's hope you get a critical hit here. Critical crit. Come on. 
Oh, oh, oh my god, how could you enjoy this? Watch how much Psychic does. You're gonna throw up in your mouth. It's so strong. Oh. Okay, that's... Yeah, that was pretty terrible. Come on, Meg B. No. I think this is GG's, mate. <laughs> But anyway, I don't mean to turn you off of the tier immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like it, it's really, really fun when you get the hang of the uh, the like little the nonsense. And, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's it, to some extent it is nonsense. I agree, but uh, I mean, how could you not love a tier that has curse talk tug and tick? My fault for not getting a normal resist. I can't open up the battle anymore. What's going on? Okay, you have Blizzard Ice Beam. What what's the item? Yeah. Oh, it's lefties. Leftover. Why don't you just put never melt ice? I like the recovery. It it helps. Um, you know, if you're if you're constantly forcing things. I mean, look at how many teams are scared to switch into Smoochum. Like how, like there's so many things that it scares out naturally because it's just faster than the really slow stuff. Uh, so you can kind of manipulate your opponent into going into something like your Magby and then you can get a sleep off early and then suddenly Smoochum's even more dangerous. Despicable. <laughs> I want to try out uh, uh, some other team. Let's see. Are these the only teams? Pirate, did you upload any of these? No. He didn't. It's just, uh, it's like Toaster and Cheem and uh... I can't remember if Apagoji posted one or not, but it's just like us. Oh yeah, IT Cameron I think posted one. Okay, I don't I use it. any. I think I got another one ready. We're gonna we're gonna do quick. We're gonna make this one quick. Oh, I think I finished the visuals in the background there. Wait. Okay. All right. Back to this, I guess. Back to this uh, enduring my defeat. So I know better than to get hit in the face by Butterfree now. I feel like I've learned my lesson. This this set is weird. I'm not gonna lie. Aw. Oh. Are there any heel bell users? Yes, we have Snubble. Is it good? It's pretty mediocre. Uh, it's it's like a weaker Teddy Ursa. For, uh, for what it's worth. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on! <laughs> How do I get past this? That's fine. It's still not going to do very much. I know, but still. 35, that's that's kind of annoying. Especially if he switches in here. So I have this uh, royalty for you, ink in water background playlist going on if for anyone the downside to... the downside here is that uh, it's going to be real easy for uh magby or smoochum to force you out when you have to recover yeah i noticed all right what's this thing's speed oh wow it's slower than smoochum and i get crit and i don't <laughs> That's barely half. 
good thing you're miracle berry, I guess. I don't know what to do. Hmm. 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 Sorry? Should have asked the pirate for a team. <laughs> Is this team not good? Does it not hold its own? Oh, of course. I'm I know I don't so want to say of course, but <laughs> like, I know saying of course is kind of cringe, but all right, let's go. Let's go, Onyx. Let's check out this speed tie. I'm going to win the speed tie and you're going to regret it. There you go. <laughs> there you go, man. I still have my sleeper. And you are gonna get a sweep, but uh, I, I couldn't come up with some catchphrase. I like how these grass types run anything but like, but a proper stab, like physical stab. Yeah, Ivysaur has to run hidden power poison. That's so sad. Can't even poison the enemy. <laughs> That is kind yeah, of disappointing. That's a good point. I think it's funny how Diglett gets Sledge Bomb and Ivy Sword doesn't. Oof. That was that was annoying. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Uh let me think. Let's do this. I got this. I got this. Oh no. My one true counter. Hmm. I really need to stop burping. I swear if this gets in, I'm not going to notice uh, any... I'm not going to notice anything. Um, Alright, so yeah. I look like... It looks like I'm in a good spot. Oh. You didn't just do that. Uh, for the record... If I have Giga Drain, I can't do anything besides attack with a non-stab move. Because in Generation 2, the way Giga Drain and Substitute are meant to interact is that it always fails. And I flinch. I'm okay. sorry for the hack. Not your fault. Not your fault. But I'm done. I was I was on to something. I'm pretty sure there's a universe where I beat you, but just not this one. So well, I'm I'm happy that you're giving the tier a try. I've been really looking forward to you giving it a shot because it's got some really cool, unique little interactions. Like I mean, for example, the the Butterfree Onyx Speed Tie basically. Whoever wins the speed tie gets the kill and stuff like that. It's just, it's really fun. Don't crit. Okay. <laughs> I still have a shot. I guess. I don't know. Whoa, that... That plus one attack stat is very hard to look at. It makes me think I'm not at level 100. Like, Onyx's attack at plus one is 282. Yeah, it's pretty pathetic. It was thought of as being, like, a joke for the tier, but, like, it honestly is one of the best answers, if not the best answer, uh, to Togetic, especially Curse Talk. Um, it just roars it out and booms on something, you know, like your Ivysaur or a Croconaw or whatever. It's just really good utility, Mon. And its speed is really nice. Like, it outspeeds a, a ton of stuff that you wouldn't expect it to. Yeah. All right, GG's, I lose this. So, wow. <laughs> GG's. I forgot to mention GG for the last game as well, so. Well played. Thank you. I'm definitely not salty after that. 
No, it looks kind of cool. I can I can dig this. Um, I don't see a lot of. It feels like a sub NU, you know. If it hadn't been for the fact that PU exists and there's like a lot of uh, normal spam there, I I can I can understand this tier. It, it kind of resembles in some regards NU. From what there I hasn't been so much normal spam. Like I, when I played in Reese's most recent um, PU tour that was on the Discord, um, I just brought the same team every round and did just fine. And I had a curse talk for it, which is like, of course, a staple. Um, but I think bringing I've been, bringing I've been different really teams is, isn't always worth. To be honest, it's kind of a controversial pick, but. Um, yeah, ignore the fact that you see in my visuals this thing that says these YouTube suggestions. I'm basically ripping from another channel, I guess. We're going to do that. So I'm just zooming out. That way we don't have to see any more of that. Okay. Yeah, it just shows buffering right now. Um. But anyway, yeah, I, I couldn't be bothered the, to make visuals of my own as much like as the, I'd like to. The PU meta I've been really enjoying lately. Um, what What's your favorite uh, lower tier? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me this. This is so hard. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Like I, I have such a special connection to ZU because I helped compile the resources and like i just i feel like kind of like it's my baby but i've just really really gotten into uu and nu and pu i just like them really all like the same i just love gsc in general all right all right but i get that i get that it's kind of for me uu is like that um i don't know why maybe it's because uh, it was yeah, the I love first to build i love to build in these lower tiers it just feels freer than any ou um, speaking of OU, I am going to try and get Zakuru on this talk now. Nice. Ping him. And, uh, yeah, because there is the next part. Uh, this, the second part actually ended up lasting a little longer, but that's fine, I guess. Well, I appreciate you're giving us a chance to discuss ZU. I really appreciate it. Yeah, but stay, um, stay tuned for the next part because this is going to be fun. Um, if, if he remember, even remembers that I'm, I'm streaming right now, <laughs> otherwise I'll just talk about it a little myself, but so I'm going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to shortly, well, not even that shortly, we're going to start talking about some of the, some OU stuff. So there's been a um, there's been um, a couple of tournaments recently that I didn't really get a chance to cover uh, to the viewers out there, uh, namely GSC uh, OU Global Championships. So and and among other things like some of the GSC OU circuit tournaments on uh, the Pokemon Perfect server. So. Maybe if we're lucky, uh, you know, we'll get a chance to look at maybe an OU game. But uh, I actually have a historical lesson for you all. And um, I'm pretty excited to present it. But I spoke with uh, Zakuru about it, and I thought I'd uh, have him talk a little bit, comment on some of the things, just to mix it up a little. Um, yeah. So, and we're on to our third part. Now we have a, another guest. And in this segment of the podcast, um, we're going to be actually doing a little history lesson for GSC. Um, first, I'm going to welcome the guest, Zakuru, also known as the Stall Lord. I don't know if that's a title appointed to himself, but <laughs> by himself. <laughs> What's up? 
Uh, nothing much. I'm fine. What about you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, so for anyone that doesn't uh, know, he has a channel, so you can definitely go and check uh, out his uh, channel. He talks about a bunch of different gens, not just GSC. And um, despite the title, he is also very proficient when it comes to offense and stuff. SPL player of this year. You know, I, need I say more? I don't know. Um, I, I definitely have a lot of fun talking with you about a bunch of different stuff. And today, um, we have this... A thread from a different website, so not from Smogon, but a different forum, which was pretty popular at at the time. It's it's still used today, but you can't say to the same extent. So uh, it's called Netbattle Forum Free, and the reason why. I, uh, I found this interesting is because I'm kind of interested in uh, the history of GSC. So I kind of lurk around different websites, and there are different forums out there. Um, I haven't seen any of the game fact stuff yet, but um, these forums were born before like Showdown was even a thing. So back at the time, they may even have been using uh, Pokemon Online or different simulators. It's in Italian, so I decided to translate it, and I shared the file with Zakuru, and he found it pretty interesting. So, yeah. So this thread is a really interesting thread. It's it's about GSC OU, and it's a it's basically a guide to the Italian players out there, and it was written by a guy who goes by the name of Beckins, and it's a guide on on team building. So. I have the, basically the, the, the window open here. Um, I'll leave a link to it if there are any Italian viewers out there, I don't think. But uh, I'm also going to open up the file real quick. The one that I sent. Because I made this translation. And who knows, maybe we'll have some more GSC history lessons in the future. So, I'm going to open this. All right, and we're going to a little yeah, bit better. So there are a couple of comments uh, that I write, but uh, we're going to try and read through a bit of this. Uh, it, it's kind of long, <laughs> but yeah. So um, do you know Beckins as a player, first of all? Have you ever I, heard of him? I, I didn't heard of him prior to, to this guide. That's why I was... Uh, really surprised uh, seeing the quality of what's written in it since it's pretty well it's not super old but uh, at the scale of competitive Pokemon it's quite old already and what well, I never heard of the guy before so that was um, th that was doubling on the surprise let's say yeah well I think it's uh I've I've only heard of him, but, like, I didn't really know him prior to reading this stuff either. Like, I, I never... Um, so this post was made in 2015, but he had been playing around 2011, maybe even earlier than that. So it was definitely a completely different meta. You didn't have... Uh, you probably didn't have Rapid Spin Golems. Yeah, you, you didn't Morgan have... Joint Dates is uh, in 2006. 2006 so that's super old like he may even have seen a hp legends band where like all of the legendaries couldn't even use hidden power i don't know but um part of the reason why i want to learn more about uh this stuff is because it can tell you a lot of how the metagame has changed today so um let's read on so he says uh Anyway, for the record, he's played in uh, a couple of World Cup events on some of the servers, like Pokemon Online. Anyway, I leave you my experience in GSC. Here are the criteria for choosing which team to use in, in a GSC battle. Keep in mind that there are only offensive and defensive teams. Then we will talk a, a, about it a little bit more. So, 
I translated this and it was pretty much automatic, but I, um, I respected, I think I respected the translation pretty well because he didn't specifically say stall until much later. Here are the criteria for choosing which team to use in a GSC battle. Um, whatever, we don't have to read everything. Um, so yeah. So he goes on first with describing um, defensive teams for uh, GSC. Using a defensive team also means that you want your greater skill in planning and prediction to weigh into the battle. Using a defensive team is more difficult in the sense that your slightest mistake can be very problematic. So don't use it against those who are stronger than you. What do you have to say? Do you, do you agree with this statement, Tsukuru? Well, I think you can use tall or defensive teams uh, versus some opponents that are better than you in general because uh, a player being better than you doesn't mean he's better when stall or defensive teams are involved. Mm -hmm. Like, I would probably avoid stalling someone like Conflict, but if I had to play versus some other great player like Ojama, uh, I know he isn't really comfortable versus stall, so I would stall him really, really uh, without any problem, I think. Uh, it would be a good team choice. But, yeah, some people are better versus stall than others, and it's not just is this guy a great player or he's a newbie it's not just that but yeah if your opponent is better than you on long games and um, planning uh, long game plans uh, abusing spikes and stuff like that maybe you shouldn't use stall versus him but if uh, he likes to uh, play aggressive teams and he he's more comfortable versus other aggressive teams Maybe you can try to stall him and put him outside of his comfort zone and stop the aggression uh, at the beginning of, of the game and take control. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I guess it's kind of like how when you're playing in Yu-Gi-Oh, obviously there are going to be certain matchups which are harder, but like def defense, right? He uses the term defensive. So I guess he makes a distinction, but the quote-unquote defensive team is kind of like a, a, a control form. You're trying to control the area and plan. Uh, like, it's a matter of managing resources and stuff. But I guess I can understand uh, what he's saying, considering that this might be a guide for someone less experienced. So maybe... So he, he's probably saying, maybe don't bring... A defensive team if you don't think you can handle the pressure against someone that's better than you who most likely is able to play against stall i i can understand that i can see that making sense using a defensive team can i go on to read using a defensive team can benefit you if you are better than your opponent as long as the matchup isn't bad it is more difficult for a defensive team to break free from a bad matchup than it is for an offensive team in most cases. That said, there are matchups in which the defensive team has the opportunity to win on the offensive almost a priori, meaning, like, regardless. Um, I guess. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, like... What do you mean is winning on matchup right like if you are using i don't know like um well let's say you use something like uh boom offense boom offense is a great style in, in uh, gsc it's well known well let's say you use boom, of boom offense and well it's not a good team that i will talk about but well let's pretend it's a decent team just to just to use it as an example Imagine I use something, uh, a stall team with uh, Venusaur and Tentacruel, okay? And you don't have Gengar in your boom offense. Well, okay. uh, it means Tentacruel will, will be able to spin uh, infinitely. And as long as Venusaur doesn't take a boom, uh, I know I can beat whatever with, is your last Pokemon you try to sweep with, right? I just have to keep Reku, Venusaur, and Tentacruel for the whole game. 
uh, unless you boom my Tanta with uh, Ploid Snorlax, but it doesn't matter. And I, I don't mind my, my Snorlax. If I can keep Raikou for your Zapdos. No, my... I mean like if you you said with the with the core of. Uh... Um, oh yeah, I mean, I mean, you have your Skarm and your, okay. your whatever in the bag, but I mean, Snorlax, especially in Boom Offense, will never be a threat to stall because you cannot use stuff like a Body Slam plus Belly Drum and stuff like that. It just doesn't work. So Snorlax is never gonna be a threat. I just have to beat your last Pokemon, and if I do that, you you cannot break. So. I mean, yes. there is Curse Boom Lax with uh, Heracross, I guess. But I guess that's one specific matchup. Like, that just already goes yeah, to show. Yeah, and that's not Boom Offense. That stuff with, like, Reku and Golem, and it's a bit bulky, right? Okay. It's All right. It's really rare that you go with Zapdos and all the, the Executor and mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, there is... So do you agree with this statement then that you can like win certain matchups just like that? Yeah, but that's for everything. Like if I use something with Nidoking and Gengar and Steelix and an offensive team like that, and I face someone who try to run like uh, Sleep Talk Vaporeon uh, instead of Suicune and uh, uh, Raw Raikou and Bailey Snorlax, he will just get completely destroyed by the offensive core. It goes both ways. You can have some great matchup mm -hmm. with Stall and you can have great matchup with offense. And you often get super good matchup when your opponent is using a bad team. Actually. Yeah, I guess it really does boil down to that. Like this this beckons is is not unlike the the like his guide is not unlike the guide written by Borat. Where Borat said something similar. He said, there are offense teams, there are stall teams, and there are fail teams, which can't make up their mind as to what they want to be, and they kind of suck because they don't have a plan in mind. Uh, that's at least how he described it. Um, but yeah, so um, usually using defensive team is very good uh, choice against what instead Be Beckens calls midway teams, a kind of team that doesn't make sense, but that exists all all the same. Defensive teams are more susceptible to hacks when directed at specific team members, but are also more able to manage it by skillfully using recovery moves. I guess hacks in, in I'm meaning like getting crit. Yeah, or ice punch freeze or stuff like that. In a neutral or unfavorable matchup, defensive teams are often forced to take major risks with predicting. Don't use defensive teams if you don't know how to use them in a highly aggressive way. Mm, I don't know about that. Like, if you don't have a good matchup, you're gonna have to rely on prediction whether you use offense or stall or defensive team. And in a neutral matchup, well, I think it's just a matter of planning better. Like, if I can just, um, um, like, pivot around my, my Pokemon that I fortress in before they in the cluster, or and I have my spikes first, and then I just play smartly with Reku, Snorlax, and I don't take too much damage, I kind of lock the game really early. I don't have to make to take major risks in prediction yeah. and I don't need to have a super matchup either to, to do that. It's just a matter of yeah, I know that matchup and I'll do my best to not giving too much free turn to my opponent and try to have spikes ASAP, try to click some move with my Snorlax to see what will happen in the opponent's team and see what are the the keys to, to the matchup and force him to reveal stuff and then I'll be able to just plan to the end and okay that's my game plan I, I'll stick to it and I'll just win the game with that when did you first start uh like playing uh GSC competitively oh I don't know I think it was like so, something like 2006 
16 or 17 maybe. I, oh. I was not good at this time, but yeah, Jesse taught me a lot of stuff. Wow, you improved really quickly then because you got you reached levels of uh, like SPL levels. And you were already playing last year and I don't know about the year before, but... Yeah, but I used to be really good at Oras and I was pretty okay at GPP and black and white. Mm -hmm. And I I was really, really good at SM when I still played the tier. I mean, no, I was asking good. more because I was thinking about like how teams can evolve. So he says this, then he actually has a lot more to say when it comes to uh, offense. So, um, but I'm, I'm actually curious. This is an interesting statement. So mind you, this was posted in 2015. So he says, looking at the SPL stats in mine too, he didn't play in SPL. Defensive teams win more. I don't know if that holds true anymore. Yeah, I don't know. If I if I look at my stats and I exclude uh, all the stupid counter team when people use unviable teams just to beat me, I think it's about equal. But like, if I remove all bad teams, I think. I think Stoll win, win less because most of the bad teams don't have Gengar and Gengar is just so good versus Stoll. So yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think if people are no fun and use just a strong team or A plus or just very very good team, often he will win more because it requires. I think it requires less skills to play offense in the current meta than to play stall because stall is less good so you need better skills to make it work and yeah gengar is just so good versus stall so yeah it will just do the job almost alone yeah so maybe i should like um yeah i think i think that the offense is optimized a lot like now it's very rare that you ever even see offense without spikes. Whereas once upon a time, it was not only conceivable, but it was very... It was almost like you would see every now and then some ride-on team with no spiker or something like that, or a Marowak team. And they'd have pretty decent success. I'm a champ even. Uh, now, like, I think one of the teams that have become synonymous with uh, that is uh, teams with lots of mixed attackers and spikes. So not having spikes means Stahl has, is just going to have a much easier time. In fact, if you look at some of the old guides, it really does. They really do say that they thought spikes was only meant for defense teams. Yeah, but now it's not as commonplace yeah, to just think that is from what I know for the old meta game, um, ghost types were were pretty rare in offensive team. Well, Gengar was played, but not as much as, as today. Okay. And stuff like Cloister didn't didn't run toxic as much, so Starmie wasn't put under uh, the poison pressure, so it was easier to spin because no ghost and uh, no toxic. No toxic. Wow. Yeah, but well, Toxic like, was played, but not as much as today, so... Yeah, but, like, here we are today, 2021, and, uh, you know, um, Cloyster is now the top three of you. Yeah. So, we're definitely in a different place in today's meta. Okay, so yeah, moving yeah, on. Yeah. Offense teams. If you think you can only lose by hacks against your opponent, choose an offensive team, because it has fewer essential key members. If you lose a member, right, a... a a, the teammate for critical like for critical hit it is usually not too serious an offensive team is much more versatile and has more tools in its kit it is therefore easier to get the hacks or cause damage with the right prediction an offensive team usually does not require great risks in prediction unless it is a high level battle in that case defensive or offensive you have to predict either way I mean, okay. 
Um, yeah, yeah. So an offensive team is more likely to lose by chance than a defensive team. I think that he contradicts what he says earlier, but that is, you may find yourself in a rage of war when you only know half of the opposing team, and maybe you haven't guessed the other half, or you haven't thought of something, or you've been forced to make choices that turn out to be wrong. So um, I, I guess an example is like, uh, I don't know, you're... You're gonna explode yeah, like on you... the on the lax because you think that's the sweeper, and then suddenly he your opponent takes your team out with Titar because you uh, you you sacrificed your Steelix or something, and that was your only check. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's it. That's it. That's it. Um, especially with the curse lax stuff you think it's one set of snorlax and then it turns out to be another which happens to be your team or there's uh you, you're ready you're preparing your team to beat uh vaporeon offense and it turns out that the last mon isn't vaporeon but it's tentacruel and... yeah or it is alakazam or espion and oh yeah especially alakazam usually just wins by element of surprise so um it makes it makes sense that these things, these elements of surprise, which he calls chance, aren't really too much of a problem for stall teams, but that's because they're inherently meant to have a lot of defensive synergy. So one thing I like a lot here is how he says, the offensive team has less strategic control. This is because using an offensive team means bringing GSC closer to ADV or RAC. Uh... And, and he describes some of the tools that you use. So like explosion teams and baton pass teams in different ways reduce the skill gap. Baton pass teams can win for free if they have a very favorable matchup. Boom offense allows you to win by chance or even by hitting a few right moves. They are ideal against stronger opponents than you, but that doesn't mean they are brainless. At high levels, they still require a lot of skill. And he goes into describing how how, how they are built. So, golden rule. There are only offensive and defensive teams. A defensive team is made up of four, or better yet, five Pokemon with a recovery move. So, I think this part is, get, is the interesting part. Those without a recovery move have explosion, or are called spin cloister or spin fortress. Almost absolute rule. If you respect it, you can't go wrong. Tyranitar, oh. and maybe a few others, can be an exception without rest because they are quite fat. Sorry. Yeah, also there is Tentacruel, very good. And Protect is the recovery move. <laughs> yeah, Protect, so that's uh, the interesting Zukuru tech. I might even pull, uh, if you can like send me the team, because I, yeah, sure. uh, I scrubbed my builder recently. Um, we can open that up and have a look at it. Um, Protect is actually an interesting concept as a recovery move, but it happens to work perfectly in GSC. So, oh, do um, you want a, a Poké Pass, maybe? Yeah, if you have that. Sure. Yeah. That's like the spiritual predecessor to uh, Tentacruel in black and white with that protect healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in rain, you mean? Yeah, it made me think of that. It's kind of a neat little tech. Yeah. I've seen people run protect on Fortress too. The problem is you have to drop a move and HP fire, spikes, rapid spin They're too and valuable. toxic are too good. So maybe you drop spin and you use like sub strami with that, but I like the double spin, it's very good. I guess the protect on Fori could be good to scout on certain teams. Maybe maybe on those Nido Gar Nido Titar teams where you have also Fori. I don't know, maybe. What what but... I like to do with Protect Fortress is I just lead with it. I take Thunder from Zapdos and I heal later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in so the what we're alluding to, what um Zukuru is alluding to is the is how Protect on Tentacruel works much in a similar way as how it works on Swampert in ADV. So you use Protect and you gain some leftovers. That's that's pretty much it. But yeah, you it's not only double switching too. That's good. It's great for double switching. 
right? Because you can probably spam it a second time if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna. Yeah, the thing is like, if you have Tomba Crawl versus Dabdos, uh, they well pretty much don't have the right to um, switch switch to like their Skarmory or whatever to predict your your switching because you are gonna click protect. So that means they cannot just uh, out momentum you. you your tentacle you will just click protect and that's a stop. So you can just switch out with, without clicking protect on the thunder or whatever because you know they you know they cannot double switch and so you gain back the momentum. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's a bit like substitute starmy where they are forced to click uh, thunder. Because yeah. also you just sub and that just stop all the momentum there. Yeah, exactly. I like that. It's sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't. It is, in fact, uh, one of those kinds of situations. I'm trying to reduce this so I can crunch the whole team together. That way you can see it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, it's a pretty standard team. You just have your Tyranita to beat Firelax, your Skarmory because it's Skarm. Uh, your fortress because you want your spikes. You have Snorlax, you have Reku because you have to have them. And then I just choose Tentacruel for spin because it leaves one Thunder from Dabdos and you can come from free on Cloister, so it's cool. Yeah, it leaves a Thunder. It's very bulky. There aren't actually, uh, it's surprising, but there are quite a few uh, waters that survive the Zapdos Thunder, so that's. Um, yeah, but they don't spin they and pour they on and speak. And speak. And... Yeah, of course, of course. Like, you don't want <laughs> them to take thunder, but you know. Um, but it's it's interesting to know, nonetheless. So, back but, to yeah. the guide. Also, he says that Snorlax must have rest. I think I agree with that. I tried to build a stall team with, without rest on Snorlax. And the aim was that I used a uh, three attack uh, belly drum Snorlax. So EQ, Flamethrower, and Body Slam. And I think I had two dedicated spinner, like I had Golem plus Tentacruel or Golem plus Starmie, something like that. And I had Ill Bell. And the idea was I will weaken the opening team with the opposing team with um, Body Slam and stuff like that to fish power. And then I will belly drum. I will try to sweep the opposing stall. And if I fail, I'll just spin and come with Lux, take leftovers, maybe for like uh, 60 turns. And then I will belly drum again. And because you cannot stop like three attack plus six Snorlax uh, forever. But the thing is, it requires too much support and you just lose two offense. So okay, okay, yeah. It was makes sense. Bad. <laughs> well, there you go. So there you have it. That's one of the interesting things. So. An offensive team has no Skarmory, Suicune, no Spinner. Mm, not, again, Golem wasn't a thing. No Beller. Yeah, and usually not even Raikou. There are exceptions yeah. to having one of these, but they are very rare cases. Raikou is a little more common. Yeah, so one good thing is in 2015, they already knew uh, Double Electric was shit. And people still use it nowadays. So, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that. But, yeah, yeah, they already knew, guys. They already knew. I don't... Wait, is is it shit? <laughs> I thought Double Electric was decent. Like Double Electric, Thief Skarmory, shit like that. Don't you... Oh, uh, no, that? don't... Well, not <laughs> Thief Skarmory, but, like... Um, like, I'm thinking about Lax, uh, Double Electric, Skarm, Golem, Cloister. Yeah, then you probably... Uh, don't you just have a lot of problem with Gengar booming your your Raikou and then it's over? Like, and Nidoking is really good versus you. Like, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> I guess it's because you, you know what the problem with Double Electric is that it's just it's some sort of midway. It is a midway team, but it's also, not like, always the worst. Anyway. If you use Karm, then your opponent can spin freely. If you use Gengar, 
then you just lose to EQ Lax. And if you lose to if you lose to EQ Lax, then maybe just run an actual offensive team so you can boom yeah. on the Lax. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah. So it has none of these. The spinner can be there if it's Foratris. But it does not have to spin necessarily. However, the spinner can be useful if you use Marowak. In an offensive yeah. team, normally only Snorlax and Vaporeon with acid armor can be allowed to have rest without sleep talk. Um, trust me, you win less if you use one of those. Yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty accurate. Nowadays, even Vaporeon and Snorlax should have rest talk because like Jinx is something, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as big at that time, I think. There is a mention later about Jinx, but it's like, yeah, you better beat it, but it's mm -hmm. not like a big thing. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a pretty good introduction to offensive team. Teams that do not respect these rules, with some exceptions, fall into the midway teams. When you use a defensive Pokemon in an offensive team, you will give the opponent the opportunity of entry during which they can use hidden hidden power, I, I think that's what he, he says, because he said HP, or send it to their, or send their sweepers. Um, it also could have meant that he was trying to regain HP, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. An offensive team must make it difficult for the opposing pokes to enter. Instead, in this way, you're facilitating it. And therefore, you don't have solid defenses because... After all, your team is an offensive one. Yep, uh, I agree with that. Um, well, there is always this the stuff, right? Nowadays, Golem is much more common, and you don't want Golem to spin, right? Uh, the thing is, uh, with the right support, it's really hard for the spikers to beat Golem, because, well, first, uh, EQ does a lot of damage, you gotta take the spikes, and if you use Cloyster, you're gonna take poison damage. Um, so, when you are using a team that rely on spikes, especially because if you're, you're using offense, Golem will have uh, uh, an hard time to come. But if you're using a defensive team with like Raikou, with like Skarmory and shit like that, uh, you want to stop Golem from uh, spinning because otherwise, if you cannot put the clock on stuff like Nido King and shit like that, it will be much, much harder for you to under to stress, like match yeah. and Pokemon like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why, for example, um, I like a lot to use Toxic on my Skarmory because, um, well, in a sense, uh, it is uh, kinda more offensive than Drillpack because if I just click drill pack on a Zapdos or a Golem, well, I, I achieve nothing and I just give momentum to my opponent. But if I use Toxic on Zapdos or on Golem, well, on Golem, the Pokemon is completely ruined, especially if it's an offensive team, which means the Golem doesn't have rest. And if it's on Zapdos, it will be forced to click rest at some point, which is one free turn for me. And it will have to watch out for uh, poison damage, so it will constrict uh, his plays, and also when it will be sleeping, it will have to rely on uh, sleep talk to deal damage or to apply pressure. Which means if I have like my Starmie or something like that uh, uh, versus the Zapdos, I can just spam sub or something like that because between sleep talk, sleep talk wars and thunder accuracy. Uh, I have much more chance to gain free turns. So, um, well, that is a defensive team example, but what I mean is that uh, no way that the metagame is much more offensive than before. Even in defensive team, you have to take in consideration the fact that you cannot give free turn to your opponent and that you want the momentum for you even at the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense that if you're using an offensive team, you want that even more and you cannot afford to use a passive Pokemon uh, like Umbreon and Pokemon like that because yeah. it just gives too much momentum for your opponent. You have to uh, keep them LC too. 
So, well, yeah, the other take... thing it says in, for example, here is uh, how on defensive teams you can't have, you can't afford to have an offensive Pokemon that doesn't have explosion or rest because that will be your first one to die, right, to get KO'd. And since you don't have offensive synergy, it's not necessarily going to be dealing enough damage. It's not going to be getting enough value out of the turns when it is in. Um, explosion, on the other hand, allows your Pokemon to take someone down with it, right? Yeah, basically, um, the aim here is that if you use a defensive team and you have an offensive Pokemon in it, you want your offensive Pokemon to be its own support, like um, Bellidrum Snorlax or Marowak or Quagsire are a good example because uh, they can basically, well, with minimal support from the team and also they have rest most of the time, but even if they didn't have rest, they can open the path of uh, for themselves, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where if you have like something like um, a matchup, uh, even with rest, uh, it cannot open the past the past for for himself because, well, yeah. it's not so hard to to constrict, especially if he if if it uses rest. But even if even if he didn't use it. It's harder because you will have less opportunity to get it in and stuff like that. So yeah, basically you want your offense your offense to work alone. Basically that's why I like spikes because it's basically free offense and you just it's just one move on your team. It is, it is. Um and he he mentions I'm currently still testing the possibility of stall teams, but for now it seems that they do not really work. So I'm not talking about it. But again, like what we call stall, he calls defensive, and I think what he what he calls stall must have been a uh, yeah a like specific Blissy subset, denied, uh... like the the do nothing stall, yeah, the one that involves consuming the PP of your opponent. Yeah, and... but I think the problem he had with stall team, with stall well do nothing teams, is that he must have tried to use Snorlax in them, which is a grave, uh, a grave mistake. Like, okay. just yeah. drop Snorlax, man. Just drop Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know the likelihood that he'll be watching this, but Beckins, if you happen to come across this video and want to reach out to us, um, I have Discord. You can also just look for Cherry Bong on uh, Smogon and uh, hit me up. You know, I'd be happy to learn more about this stuff. Um, ecco, no, puoi contattarmi o su uh, Smogon oppure su Discord se la cosa ti interessa, cioè dovesse interessarti perché a me interessa molto. There, I said it in Italian. Um, <laughs> so, okay. I mean, this is taking a long time, but you know, um, it's interesting. it is pretty interesting. Like we could, maybe we can um, touch on it a little bit more. I don't think I'm going to be reading the whole thing because this is quite long again, and it's only like halfway done. But you know, it's I think it's pretty cool. So you know, you. So yeah, um, oh my. I'm zooming out here, but uh, rem so here are some reminders from Beckins. A defensive team, besides just Skarmory, must have an emergency method versus Drumlax. Usually it's an explosion or a Machamp with cross chop. And he says rest talk because the team is defensive. I don't know if that holds true today or Marowak. I can see Marowak making sense. Um, but probably just another emergency method. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Do you need yeah. a second Drumlax answer? Well, basically, overall in this guide, um, is really really centered around Drumlax. Even like he, later on the guide, we will probably won't see that. But he talks about um, Drumlax as a lead and. Oh, you have to not let set, uh, Drumlax set up turn one. Well, I think today, even if anyone will drum, will uh, lead with Drumlax, I don't know a lot of players that will click Belly Drum turn one. I, 
like that seems very unlikely but yeah Dremlax used to be uh, a great threat so I guess in a metagame where people use it a lot you gotta prepare for it but basically if you have Skarmory plus a, f uh, a normal fire resist well basically a rock type uh, you are fine with Dremlax in yeah. my experience uh, also, Golem, if you have statues Tyranitar. and spikes in your team, Dumlax cannot set up, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you have spikes, you should be fine. So, it's... Yeah. So, after building an offensive team, or while building it, try to imagine a team that completely walls yours. If it exists, make adjustments so that it no longer exists. Defensive teams must at least have a long-term method for beating others. In the case of defensive teams, think like this. Is there a team that can stall mine no matter how I play? For example, Skarmory with Curse can stall forever a Snorlax with Curse, Body Slam, EQ, and Rest, but it cannot st uh, forever stall a Drumlax, which at the right moment can take it down. Um, I think I would widen the range here. Mm, like, this Skarmory, for example, that we saw earlier um the one i'm pointing at right now in your team i'm pretty yeah, sure this one can stall a uh, belly drum lax just fine well it can but there is some things like if you i think you have a great a great chance at stopping it the thing is you can have very bad sleep talks and you can have full paras which makes snorlax beat it but yeah, basically, as long as you don't play badly and you don't let Snorlax come for free and you you play your Skarmory well, which means you don't click Sleep Talk every time when you don't have to, so you don't wall rest and of, go yeah. for two more turns and stuff like that. And you take your, your leftovers when you can and stuff like that. Basically, Drumlax cannot ever beat you unless it have a fire move or an electric move. Yeah, but, but in which case, whatever, like, or, then you lose. Or you jax. And... Yeah. yeah. Drill but, Peck uh, is also pretty good, I guess. If you're Drill Peck Skarm, maybe it would be a little better against Drum. But, uh, yeah. yeah, like, I think the fact that you can use, you can feasibly use uh, no attack Skarmory, uh, Sleep Talk Curse, Rest... You don't want whirlwind um then you can you can do pretty well at least in today's meta it's very feasible you don't always have to use that but uh it does get screwed over by other things like um i remember losing to a congas con but you know it's congas <laughs> con so yeah Anyway, well, win wouldn't be Congress card, so... Exactly, it, it wouldn't beat it anyway, so there's that. Um, uh, in, uh... Also, in the, it's interesting because, like he said, uh, if you use a, a, def a defensive team, you have to beat other teams uh, in the long term with like stuff like Drumlax, right? So that's what he, we just mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, well... I don't know exactly what was the mega game at the time, but it seems like that spikes wasn't so huge because, like, I don't know if it's just me that just think like that nowadays. But I think that if you have spikes on your team on a Pokemon that you know will be able to keep them uh, for a really long time, unless you face a team that doesn't have spikes uh, itself, because like. Um, if you use like Fortress with Toxic and HP Fire, uh, unless the opposing team is dedicated to spin, and not, well, if it is dedicated to spin, he probably doesn't have spikes themselves. And if they are not, you will have your spikes. So, spikes plus like pivoting Reku Snorlax indefinitely just wins a lot of games. It does, and it you does. Don't need, uh, yeah, you don't need, yeah you don't it's, need it's a huge support. Have offensive uh, power like they didn't really see the potential i guess i don't know Could yeah that, that's what uh that's but what uh I mean. yeah so i think that's i always find this stuff kind of awesome so um 
it, he also says on offensive teams you shouldn't be satisfied with sweeping only through hacks. So if you have if you only manage to win by creating something, then there might be something wrong with your team structure essentially. Yep. In defensive teams, you can have a decent offense if you use Curse Flame Lax or Belly Drum or Toxic Flame Lax or Double Edge Thunder and EQ. So he has a bunch of different combinations of Snorlax. The offense of a defensive team is hardly based on other Pokemon, but there are some cases like Marowak, right? Usually yep. a defensive team has another member besides Lax that attacks physically, at least in part. So he mentions Boom Cloister, which also has spikes, or Tyranitar, for instance. Sometimes when you when it's not there, you can really notice it. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Tyranitar here, here is that nowadays Tyranitar isn't so much of a physical attacker. Well, it does physical attacks, but it will pretty much bounce off everything unless you 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 play versus uh, Nidoking, Gengar, and stuff like that. But offensive teams uh, aren't meant to take Tyranitar's attack. But like he he's basically speaking of uh beating beating stall with your own stall offensively mm -hmm. and for what i know at this time uh curse on tyranitar was much more common and when tyranitar starts starts uh, to click curse and you don't have your suicune anymore or an lc army or something like that uh, it can really, really go 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 wild quickly. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's why you mentioned. I can see Tyranitar it being a problem for lots of teams. Because standard standard Tyranitar that is used nowadays, especially in stone, is like uh, Rock Slide, Pursuit, Over, and Rest. Maybe you can use something like Curse uh, in place of War. I think you really want Rest. Because toxic is a real problem in the meta game, yeah. and also you don't yeah. want to take power on on Tyranitar. So yeah, nowadays Tyranitar is no no threat to, to store. Yeah. Then there's because... this part. So I'm not gonna again. I'm not gonna read everything, but I'll try and maybe I'll put it in a Google document so for people to read. But uh, Snorlax does not counter Zapdos. Uh, despite, uh, you know, popular belief, right? Snorlax yeah, Sleep Talker, yeah. more or less, but that's no longer true if there are spikes. Uh, to counter Zapdos, use Raikou or Snorlax plus a ground, um, such a, or Snorlax and, and Blissey, preferably with Ice Beam, Quagsire, I don't know, or Egg and Pyloswine. He has a bunch of different cores that he suggests, right? But uh, Snorlax... C-C-C-C. Uh, it was what well, it was, um, uh, 2015, right? Yes. They already knew that Zapdos was number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then he has this asterisk here, and he says, over time, I realized that Snorlax plus Ground isn't enough, though. So, um, what I find interesting about that is how, um, like I always try to mention in replays and stuff like that when I'm playing OU. If I see a Cloister lead, there better be a Raikou or a Blissey in the back because you're not going to take care of uh, of Zapdos with your Lax or your Ground type or your Nidoking. Uh, you need something that can actually stomach the Thunders. Even Exeggutor isn't really enough. Um, so I think that that's pretty important, actually. Um, well, for just a little uh, to be accurate, I've seen team in the past that used uh, rest on executor and also leech seed, oh, okay. or maybe synthesis. I don't know if it learns it, but with yeah, it actual recovery moves. So especially a conflict team, I think, and so it was probably much more common at the time. So, well, if you have Quagsire or your main uh, Zapdos answer and you have, like, or you have Pyloswan, right? Or yeah. Steelix. 
and the run HP water, you can go to executor and completely wall it. And if it's HP ice, then you can go to the other right. Yeah, yeah. That so, I remember reading somewhere yeah, about the core, which was seen as a huge innovation, Exeggutor and Steelix. One yeah, that is, was on Borat Guild. One takes, yeah, exactly. Borat uh, thought of it and it was really innovative. Um, uh, Steelix takes, you know, neutral damage from Hidden Power Ice and Exeggutor resists um, Hidden Power um, Water. So you have basically the the two moves covered. Um, yeah, that's why the new meta is HP Fire, but uh, yeah, let, let's it wasn't, that. No, that yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Tell me where you think I should go further, actually, because I I'm at a loss well, here. Been... Let me let me let me read really quick. Uh, maybe I can just like read along really quickly and mm -hmm. talk about what's interesting in that. So, yeah, he said like remember that team based on lures and pursuits. Mm -hmm. that involves a final sweep of a sweeper work less than those based on variant offense which means that probably mixed offense or like needle king and stuff like that um, basically if you have like spikes and you attack your opponents uh, you will break the team at, mm -hmm. at one point right but if you try to set up the way for a vaporeon or matchup and your pokemon is stopped cold by something that you didn't expect or just because you, your yeah. opponent, you, you like you boom the Raikou, but yeah. oh, there is a Zapdos too, so my Vaporeon cannot break. Yeah, uh, it will be a problem, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was that. Uh, defensive team must have the spinner. We already talked about that. Uh, some drum last shit. We don't care. Uh, oh, remember to counter Umbron Trapper. Uh, yeah, that, because that was pretty huge at the time, I guess. He talked about fast and core and. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like Era Cross and Prime Ape. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that, man, but okay. Um, uh, make sure you can control last month setup. Well, yeah, because like Curse Lax was always a huge, a huge stuff. He talked about Perishong, he talked about Destiny Bond. Um, and yeah, Match and Cross Shop, but that's for offensive team, right? Even though what it is a uh, Snorlax control measure. Uh, remember to control Jinx, we talked about that earlier. Uh, as well have a super counter like Snorlax Stalker or two normal counters, uh, I would say I have two super counters nowadays because yeah. Ziploc Snorlax uh, can have problems, as we all know, especially yeah, Sith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you should have. You should if have you're two not... counters. It's even hard to yeah. fit uh, a, a super counter on uh, on an offense team nowadays. Yeah, but jinx. if it's an offensive team, so just bring two. If you have an offensive team, Zapdos is a good counter measure because you outspeed and you can kill with two thunder if you get spikes damage beforehand yeah. so i yeah, don't it, i don't necessarily agree like i kind of think you have to outplay um if yeah you yeah, don't want to use uh especially since vaporeon isn't so good anymore uh it's yeah, great but, but it's just not like it's all it's still a huge threat but, yeah, sure, but I mean, but if with you have all the fast-paced offense, you don't. There are only so many sleep talkers you can have on a team that actually are, can definitely switch in on anything that Jinx has. So if you have a team that's like, oh shit, I got Curse EQ Lax, a bunch of things that are weak to Ice Beam and Zapdos, it's like, what am I gonna do for the sleep talk? You just outplay oh. uh, for the lovely kiss. I mean. There is something really interesting. He talks about choosing the lead. And I know you read Borat Kid, Borat Kid, and he says that um, a lead doesn't matter. Lead doesn't matter, yeah. I remember him yeah, saying I that. I don't really agree with that. And Me either. The thing is, Bakins doesn't agree either, but he doesn't agree because of Drumlax. But sh Drumlax, we don't. Ma don't, don't, don't uh, I think he just had to make one example. So he yeah, has but... to say that you have to be able to, like, leads matter because you have to be able to prevent lax from uh, sweeping you turn one. And I think that yeah. even if it's not drum lax anymore, I think that still holds true. But um, basically, today. why lead matters today? Lead matters because of spikes. Yeah. Uh, 
especially Basically, because of that. If you, you, I think you have to choose your lead uh, depending of well, depending on of your spiker and depending if you have one, like if you run stall of your spinner, right? Because if you have tentacruel, you don't care if cloister comes, right? But anyway, whatever you run, you want your spiker to come first and click your spikes first. Because usually what will happen is your opponent will send their spiker too and will trade spikes with you. But then you can go to your spinner on the sparker, spiker and just spin them. Or you can go to Gengar or Zapdos and apply pressure from that, right? Mm -hmm. So the first people, the first player to click spikes is gonna have a huge advantage. So if you run Zapdos and you just lead with it, you prevent Spiker from coming and you can force Snorlax to rest to get your Spiker in, right? Or you can force Snorlax to come to um, to uh, to have a free cluster basically, right? Yeah. Uh, but then you have problem with Reiku. So maybe um, you know that if Reiku comes, uh, then maybe you will have to go Snorlax, and that's not good because you give a free spikes to your opponent, right? So you have to know before the game what is your plan for having your spiker first. So maybe if there is a Reiku. Uh, you will go Nidoking on the Thunder and you will double switch to Cloister, right? Because you force Snorlax to come or something like that. I, it's just like ideas, but the idea is that you have to recognize, uh, like, to have a switch pattern that will end on your Spiker, so you will click Spikes first, yeah, right? The switch and patterns. You have to basically manipulate your opponent into giving you Spikes, right? Uh, maybe that's yeah. a bit yeah. advanced as a concept, but. I think it's really important in, in the current meta. I don't see a lot of people do that well. They do it uh, without uh, knowing it because like, oh yeah, I have a, a free cluster right now, I will take it. But I don't know if they build their team and choose their lead uh, using that concept, right? Like, conscient con consciously. I, yeah. I don't know if they do that. Consciously, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. But what I if we really What important. if we try to take something away from that and see if we find anything like that in uh we we only i think we only have time for one more game uh, it's 5 p.m for me now so jesus christ i gotta i actually do have to get to study at some point but let's uh i don't know for example um this was actually a really long time ago but on uh since as tradition i do want to look at recent quote unquote uh tournaments that happened and um there's this uh we could do that alternatively there's another gscou game I'm, i have in mind that's kind of cool um it's actually from the world cup of pokemon so the world cup of uh, pokemon perfect is a tournament involving a bunch of different teams I am co-captaining for GSC uh, for uh, Canada, so I didn't actually get to play, but that's because I have too much going on in my life. But um, I was pretty proud of this win in GSC. Unfortunately, we didn't win the week, but um, I brought. I think I made a decent prediction as to what my what. Uh, the opposing team would bring and uh so i just gave uh Evigaro, who's playing for canada i gave him a, a starmy team which i think is the sulcata starmy team there wasn't really much need to modify for this but it, yeah so Evigaro on uh with this sulcata nightmare starmy team versus Igor. So I saw that Igor would bring a lot of mons that are kind of weak to Starmie. Uh and Curse Eculax. Igor playing on uh USSR. So we could we could probably have a look at that. Sure. Yeah. So if we go right here. There. 
And let me just zoom that out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to put it on slow. That way we could probably like comment over it. I don't think it was too fast of a game, but... Jinx. Okay. Sorry. I was turning off the music because it was deafening. Okay. So, um, this is, this uh, is yeah, it's a curse EQ. Uh, there's a Fori, there's a sub Nightmare Starmie, there's a Golem, Zapdos, and I'm, I think, a Gengar. I'm not sure. Okay, so you lose to Reiku. Okay, okay. Just, just so we know. Yeah, but he didn't have a lot of Reiku. I oh, mean, I don't turn know. Turn one counter. No. Turn one counter. Yeah, he used turn one counter. So uh, that didn't happen for the sole fact that the lead Snorlax was weak to Lovely Kiss. I'm glad he didn't click double edge there. But um, so yeah, um, there are some good plays some questionable plays but uh yeah you know yeah so. is that sleep talk fortress <laughs> no oh too bad <laughs> too bad yeah but uh i don't know i guess i'm just flexing the fact uh, that nah, i made a good should... prediction but Crystal should surf on that, on that fortress first because you don't want it to wake up. And it and did. So I, I woke up there is... after like two turns. Anyways, I'm going to leave it on the Hmm? No, so that's surf. And I think I might have gone to Starmie. But I don't know. Uh, Ejigaro doesn't play really well. For the moment. Okay, Toxic. Well, why doesn't Igor just go Gengar? Yeah, finally. Spin. So, I don't know. I haven't even made a single question on this, but... There is part of me that at least thinks that he could have just subbed turn one. Uh, with what? With uh, Jinx, Igor. The Jinx doesn't have sub. Oh wait, doesn't? Oh no, because it's counter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll forget see... I said that. Forget I said that. This team is. Oh, d d don't tell me he boomed on the Gengar. Okay, thank God. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a a week one game. Well, it shows that he, it isn't a playoff game, right? <laughs> what? It, it shows that it is not a playoff game. Well, I mean, it's it, just a it's just a a game. I I don't know. Like yeah. I think that. And no golem comes, and that's game over, right? J just here, it's game over. For. For, For who? Like if Figaro just won the game here. Because he spun. Royster is basically dead. It's at 76. It's. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> uh, Golem is EQ. kinda LC. Cloister won't be able to come anymore. Yeah, yeah. Cloister is dead, as I, as I said. Uh, and we have a Substar Army in the back. We have a Gengar that is full. We have a Fortress that will be able to boom. We have a Curse Equilax that is. Completely full. Yeah, that's game over. Maybe yeah, you just click, click boom with that Gengar right now, and you take the Snorlax and you win. I think the turn own. one wake up or turn two wake up was pretty huge. It was a turn four wake up. Oh, well then, yeah. I'll shut up. I I I Igor really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, he okay, just no. got. He got. I think it was unfortunate, or maybe he should have just taken advantage of that momentum a little better. Uh, I, here, I, I, I was why. thinking I, that he shouldn't have switched into Starmie yet. Kind of risky. Yeah. Since shouldn't. it's the win condition. Uh, hello, hello. My name is uh, Zakudu. 
Oh my god, Taiga is so stupid. <laughs> hey, oh my god, Taiga, you're so stupid. Hey. <laughs> I happened to be looking away when he did that, and I had to see who said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since it wasn't me, I yeah no, I could tell. <laughs> um, uh, Zuko oh. just shut right up, I guess. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. But... <laughs> Uh, I let you talk about the game a little bit because uh, I'm just talking alone since the beginning. So I know this oh, is the what, end. What of... the fuck? Why is it Whirlwind Zapdos? Uh, because he doesn't have a phaser. If the last is Arakazam, I will. Oh, why is it he choose Snorlax? What the fuck? They they really want to to lose to to Monorax. And to just curse Norax in general. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. I don't know. Yeah, I'm if not sure. Like as I'm last, I'm gonna commit a murder. <laughs> I'm telling you right away. Okay. Well, that's you better heard it here like first. Last. I don't know. I just feel I feel like so tired all of a sudden. I don't know how long I've been streaming, but yeah. So um. Yeah. If, um, if it's T-Bolt on Zapdos 2, I'm gonna commit a second murder. I don't know... Okay, it's Thunder. Oh, it's Missy. But yeah, at least it's Thunder. I don't know why they, they use uh, Whirlwind Zapdos. I know they switch out of Fortress. Yeah, why not? They switched out on the same turn, so that actually didn't amount to anything. They don't. Why is they use HP Ice on Whirlwind Zapdos? Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't this make is some bra moment. What? Said so this is a bra moment. It was a bit of a bra Indeed. moment, but uh. Okay, no Snorlax with come send a miss. Okay. Um, I don't know what he does it's here? Okay. It's kind of terrible because, like, Alakazam just win the game. Why, why is it Dynamic Punch Gengar again? Uh, oh. What do you mean, why? It's to That's hit uh, T-Tar, probably. Because he has yeah, a Psychic you, you, in the back. Yeah, you just did the de Steady Bond it. Sorry, I switched. Uh, uh, I skip to the reset. Uh, 30. It was probably around here. I'm going to mash the button. There. Yeah, 33. Totally. All right. I'm going to call the stream, oh, like officially done after this because i've been on yeah. this for too long i i don't know i don't know what i was thinking yeah i was in tigers yeah if it's alakazam last i will fund this person and <laughs> it will go really wrong for them I can need to on. <laughs> okay don't worry don't worry if it's I'm, Espeon, it's i know how the game go. went so i'm not i'm not even uh that's why I'm not saying nothing, but uh, yeah, this this part is a bit tricky. I think why, why, why EQ like they won't go Gengar? They will just PP soul your double yeah. edge, just spam and pray for a crit. I feel like you should go to Fury uh, uh, here, uh, right? Uh, nah, nah, you just PP soul Snorlax. Like uh, this, you know? You, uh, you just get PP soul, you know? And uh, I think that uh, it's not looking good for him, you know? Bro, I, I don't know what accent uh, you are making, but I'm not Indian, right? So, <laughs> why are you mimicking an Indian, an Indian accent? Yeah. Yeah, bro, you, you should you should work on your This French isn't accent. very politically correct. Not, not political parrot. <laughs> Look at who you've got in this call. Do you think this is going to be a politically correct call? Nah, I don't care. I mean, I obviously just don't. I'm the most I, politically I correct in this call. Don't worry about it, man. I feel like he should have gone to Fori earlier, take the EQ and just r let it rip, you know, just explode. 
What is the last Pokemon on Evigaro's side? It's Zapdos, right? It's Zapdos, yeah. Okay, if Bruh. this Espion doesn't have bites. Okay, it doesn't even have HP fire, okay. <sighs> it's I think it's uh Moonlight, I don't know. Or sub I can, one or the other. Game's very bad, what the hell? What? Yeah, sub, okay. And we just lose to zap. Well played. Why do you grow really? just sub on the miss? You have to fish. Oh yeah, especially since Espeon's faster. I don't know, like, I feel this game, both players had no clue on what they were supposed to click each turn. That, but that happens in some tournaments. I think that, like, when there's a certain level, this is ob obviously isn't SPL, you know. I think the matchup counts for a lot, and the fact that I predicted that he'd have a team that is kind of well, kind I mean, of has if, a hard time breaking Starmie. I feel pretty I mean, proud that I predicted I, I that. I mean, but. if they got a, a good team, like if they got my Alakazam uh, converging team with the right moves, uh, Alakazam just wins straight up the game. Yeah. But yeah, for, for some reason, uh, the team was shit. So, yeah. It it has some yeah issues I to say especially the whirlwind part. Anyway, um, yeah, this is. I'd say that this podcast is officially over. I'm absolutely tired and I need to study. Um, stay tuned if you guys enjoyed. Um, subscribe and all that and all that jazz. Um, okay. So thanks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, smash that like button. Smash the oh, I hate saying that. That's so cringe. Yeah, smash <laughs> and don't forget to smash. say GG even if you lose. Don't be salty. Yeah.